All right, we out here. It is a new release Friday. We out here. I said that already. Oh, we're, sorry. It's okay. Uh, we're out here with a new release Friday. We're going to throw some uh, discs for you. you can show you. Hold on. Look at, look at my face. Look at your face. <laughs> it is kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are we going to do this, I though? I don't know. Oh, look at me. I'm Bobby. I'm mm. filming with the Ooh, camera let me be face Robert. cam. Let me be Robert. Your hair's not good enough. Something oh, about tacos. Yeah. Oh, torchies. Torchies. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right, we're back again. All right, we are out here for the new release. We're out here. Again, I said we that. We are out. Okay, whatever. Okay, so we're out here with the new release Friday at Jones East Hole 13. And like we did last time, we're going to do some uh, throws for you so you can kind of see how it throws for myself, who's more of an amateur. Robert, who calls himself a pro. Don't you forget it. He's a pro. He's thousand. Whatever. What fine. are you now? Thousand. Ten oh three right now. Ten oh three. So ten oh three, and then we've got Anthony and Danny on the other side of the field. They're gonna throw these discs as well. So what do we have, Robert? We have. All right. Here's what we got. Lucid Raider. Bam. Bam. One of my favorite frisbees that uh, that we've had. Definitely my favorite release this year. Fantastic distance driver. The Lucid ones are actually pretty darn overstable, so you're gonna like them if you got. A big arm or looking for something a little bit more consistent in the wind. Bam! Bam! Next one. Gold Line Explorer. Bam! Bam! I uh, I actually super like the Explorer. I carry two right now. Um, one of them is a gold line. I like it for a little bit straighter shots than the uh, than the Opto that I've got. Uh, I think everybody could benefit by having an Explorer. Bam! And the last one we're gonna throw today. Bam! Bam! <laughs> no, that, that wasn't very good on your part, but you tried. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the uh, more full weight diamond. Uh, so these are plus 170 carat here. Do not take us to court over that as these are not actual diamonds. Yeah, right. uh, but yeah, these are, yeah, these are 170 gram, at least this one is diamond. Uh, I think this is a disc that people have slept on for a long time just because it's a lightweight disc. It's considered a beginner disc. This is a fantastic flying disc. I think you guys are gonna like the flights you can get out of it. You know, some people would consider me full weight. Bam! <laughs> Bam! <laughs> We're out here, uh, ready to throw the diamond We're for you guys. We're, oh, no, I said it this oh, time, okay, whatever. Okay. What, fine, okay. Uh, these are, this is a 170 gram diamond, 175 right here. Um, like we said, diamond always has been a uh, kind of a lightweight disc, considered a beginner disc. This is more full weight version of it, let's check it out. So I'm gonna throw the lighter one first. Uh, out of the gate, I'm just gonna put probably a little bit of hyzer on it, uh, see if we can get it to flip up and ride for us. Do my best to aim at Anthony, but you know, we'll see how that goes. So yeah, a little hyzer up over to the right, and you can get an absolutely full flight out of this disc. Like I didn't, I mean I didn't throw that as hard as I could, but I threw like kind of hard. I bet that went, I don't know, 330, 340. Really not bad. Um, all right, so this is the other 170 gram one. This is the uh, 175. I'm gonna do, do my best to get this one to stay flat for a little bit longer. So I'm gonna do a little bit more hyzer, see if we can get it to ride straight, or maybe, actually, let's do this instead. Let's do a little less hyzer, see if we can get it to pan to the right all the way. It shouldn't be too hard. We'll give it a shot. Should be a nice, smooth hyzer up to flat, over to the right. Yeah, that's just, honest to goodness, that's a shot shaper. Like, under those branches all the way up to flat and then just ride to the right. Super cool disc. Uh, I think that's one that people are gonna love in that kind of understable slot. You could probably roll with it. We only have two out at the field, so I can't throw one for you right now, but I think it's really good. Diamond, 170 grams. Let's uh, give this thing a shot. It feels like it's gonna have a ton of glide, but I don't know, we'll see. I'm expecting fairly understable with it being max weight-ish now uh, maybe a, a little bit more than a regular diamond probably like a, a maverick maybe a little bit less whoa so that one came out a little bit flat turned a little bit more than i was expecting it's definitely more understable than a maverick for sure uh not quite like a witness but it's it's definitely on the understable side we do have a little bit of uh headwind as well. So we'll try this pink one, 175. So maybe a little bit more, I'll give it a little bit more hyzer. There we go. Hyzer, 
Like this, right? Yeah. It's a good little frisbee right there. All right, now my turn. Now I'm the guy that doesn't throw very far. I'm the slow arm in the group. Uh, but I want to show uh, some of you guys out there how it throws for you. Now, uh, we didn't mention it before, but for us, me and Robert, there's a slight tailwind, and then I don't know if Anthony and Danny mentioned it, but there's actually a slight headwind for them. So slight headwind for them. So that's going to affect the flight as well, obviously. So I'm going to try the which one was the lightest orange one? Is the, lighter. the orange was the lightest one. I'm just going to throw it nice and straight just to see what happens. Okay. So as you can see, stayed straight, nice straight throw for me. Um, wasn't looking for a lot of distance. Of course, I don't think this is a disc that I'm going to try to get a lot of distance out of. Uh, but it stayed nice and straight when I threw it on a flat line. All right, so this one, how much, this is a little bit heavier? 175. Or? 175. So we'll see what happens here. I think I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to give it a little more, just a little more oomph, but still on a straight line. That's in PDJ rulebook, right, Umph? Mm, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a statistic measured in UDISC. Yes, yes, we need to talk to UDISC about that. It's a nice looking flight there. So, nice looking fi flight, I gave it a little more of the oomph, and it actually tried to turn just ever so slightly that gave it just a little more distance. So, the diamond to me, it's a good controllable disc for someone of my uh, caliber of professional, not very much good player. Here. So the new 170 karat Opto Diamonds here, I'm gonna go one, they've kind of shown you how they fly for like a normal golf shot. I'm gonna try and throw this one as absolutely hard as I can. And then this one, I'm gonna try a roller. So first we're gonna go super hyzer flip. Let's see how this goes. I had a lot of good glide, nice smooth turn. I probably wouldn't throw it as hard as I could very often if it was in my bag, but I didn't have to worry about it fading out because it was gonna hold to the right the whole way. And this one I'm gonna try and, and roll. I'm trying to set this one down 150, 200 feet out and then see where it rolls from there. I'm going roller! Robert's gonna play goalie. I missed it. I didn't see where it finished. Same. But it was easy to get down. I really like that. It was. It was. The turn was late enough into the flights where it was easy to get it down on the ground. So I definitely could see, could see using that one as a roller for sure. All right. So based on what we've seen from these throws, I think people with a little bit slower arm are going to really enjoy the diamond, and even people with a little bit faster arm or a, maybe even a higher skill level are going to find some utility from the diamond, throwing it on that hyzer and working it up to flat maybe getting it to the right as well. Uh, this is gonna be a great disc in the woods. Could be a really good roller for you. And a nice step up from a very, very much a beginner disc um, in the lightweight diamond to something that's gonna give you a little bit more distance and stability. So uh, yeah, check this one out. I think you'll be surprised. That's the full weight plus 170 karat diamond. All right. This is one of my favorites that we've come out with in the last couple of years. This is the Goldline Explorer. The Explorer is a nice, stable, kind of neutral fairway driver. It's going to start off a little bit overstable and then just be super duper straight for a really long time as it works in. Uh, this is a seven speed disc, so extremely comfortable and your hand doesn't feel like it's a really wide rim. But you can get a lot of distance out of a disc like this because it has so much glide. We've got this as a five glide. Um, you know, people can argue about numbers all they want to. I'm just telling you, you can send these a long, long way. Uh, so what I use the Explorer for is little short straight shots that finish left or my gold line one I've had for a little while. It's, uh, it's standing up to straight now and I can even push it right if I want to. So great for shaping shots, a really good stability for that. I'm just going to try and throw it pretty flat, see where we can put it out there, alright? They're standing a long way away like I'm going to reach them and who knows what's going to happen. A little more hyzer than I'd intended, but you can see it wants to stay in the air for a long time. That doesn't really dive to the left, 
it just kind of held the angle that I wanted it to and even just kind of finished on that angle, didn't really dive down. So I love the Explorer. If you haven't checked it out, I would greatly recommend uh, the Goldmine Explorer. I think it's a really accessible mold for everybody. All right, so we have the Goldmine Explorer. This, the Explorer, excuse me, is actually a disc that I just put back into my bag. So uh, we'll see how the gold line differs from the opto line. I'm guessing probably just a little bit less stable, maybe a little bit of turn out of it. Uh, again, we do have a little bit of a headwind, so that might help flip it a little bit. I'm just gonna try and hit it on a touch of hyzer and see if we can't get it to stand up. Uh, not quite. It held the hyzer pretty well especially considering uh, considering that it's a 165 so it's a little bit lighter and then like I said a little bit of a headwind as well and it kind of held that hyzer line really well uh, I like it nice and stable out of your hand but not dumpy overstable it's really similar to the optos I think all right so now my turn for the gold line Explorer now for the straight controllable fairway shots I typically grab a map grab a maverick from dynamic disc because the Explorer is just a tad little bit overstable for me uh, but I want to see how it flies in the gold line plastic to see uh, if it still has that over stability -ness with my throw. So I ended up throwing it a little bit nose up, which of course is going to affect the flight, but just as I expected, it faded to the left just a little bit more than my Maverick would. So if I had a shot that maybe there was some headwind going on, I might grab the Maverick or the I might grab the Explorer before I grab the Maverick. So just like the last one, you've already seen how the Gold Line Explorer will fly for most golf shots, most shots that you're going to see on the course. I'm going to mix it up, throw something in there for the forehand throwers out there, guys who just love that clockwise rotation. I've got a uh, the 165 gold line explorer here i'm going to start on a little bit of a hyzer and uh, and see how it goes it, it's a little bit domey i don't usually like domier discs for my forehand but um so that's my excuse already if it goes poorly but if it goes well it was definitely on me oh that's on me that's definitely on me right there no, I actually like uh, like the flight of it. it. I like the lighter weight discs for my forehand because they don't really take as much power. But it had a it had a nice straight flight to it. It handled the torque really well. I expected it to to have a little bit more turn, and you saw it fluttered a little bit out of my hand. That's just again because of that dome. But yeah, it it, it held up to the torque really really well. So that's going to do it for the Explorer. One of my new favorite molds over the last couple of years. This at higher arm speeds is going to be pretty darn solid and really neutral maybe a little bit overstable and then just go super duper straight which is a really good thing to have at a little bit lower arm speed this is going to be a nice kind of a usable stability for those fairway shots you just want to get left but but don't want to dive left like a felon or pioneer or something like that so that's the explorer if you haven't picked one of these up come on man you got to check them out the last one that we're going to throw today this one though this is the real deal Lucid Raider. Uh, the Raider is a highly anticipated release from Dynamic Disc this year, and uh, in my opinion, it has done a lot, even more than I thought it was going to for my distance drivers. I thought I might bag, you know, one or two, and pretty much all of my distance drivers now are Raiders in some form or fashion. Uh, so the Lucid Raider generally is a little bit more overstable than the Fusion out of the box. I think these are a little bit better for me for wind fighting or if I absolutely have to get something left at the end of the flight, that's what I use the Lucid Raider for. Uh, the two that we have today are a 175 on this clear one and then a 168 on this one. And you can kind of see some of the air bubbles in there. This isn't an air Raider, so to speak, but that's what you have to do to get this disc into that lighter weight. So I'm gonna throw this one backhand first uh, and then I'm gonna give this one a forehand shot. Uh, not the best forehand player in the world, but we'll give it a shot. So this lightweight one, the, the yellow pin down there is about 425, 430 feet. I'm gonna do my best to throw this kind of flat and get over there. I probably won't be able to reach because these are generally pretty overstable. I'm gonna do my best. Danny's got the hot feet, he's ready. And I, that is, 
headed straight at Anthony. A little bit of a pull to the right for me, but uh, still good stability even with that uh, 168 weight, which is pretty sweet. And all right, here's my best forehand impression. If you really love throwing forehands and you're like, man, that forehand didn't look very good. I know, okay, I'm just trying my best. So here we go, forehand with the Raider. I'm gonna try and just finish it, maybe kind of over by that little tree by the garden or even a little bit farther. Wanted to start it on that Anheuser just to see how far we could push it out there and like, that's got really, really nice stability for a high speed disc. It's not quite like an Enforcer or Defender where it just goes, it's got a little bit of ride to it. That's what I really like, especially for someone who doesn't crunch on a forehand, I kind of have to throw that full flex to get big time distance, well, big time distance, let's put big air quotes around that, more distance for myself. But uh, I love the Lucid Raider. I think it's a fantastic disc. Lucid Raider, obviously, the Fusion Raider is an incredible disc that everybody already knows and loves. So now we've got the Lucid Raider. I'm expecting maybe a little bit more stability. Uh, this one's a little bit lighter, so it might actually be pretty similar. Probably about the same dome on top. So let's give this thing a try. Probably just gonna throw it on a touch of hyzer and just let it hopefully stand up and fly nice and straight. Or it, it can just hold the hyzer the entire time, even into a little bit of a headwind, a little bit uphill, probably through that, I don't know, 80, 90%. So pretty powerful, not quite full power. We've got one more here. This one is white, a little bit heavier, a little bit more dome maybe, not a ton. So this one's probably gonna be a little bit more stable. I'm gonna try and hit this one flat or maybe even a little bit of a turnover and see if it'll hold that or if it'll fight out. So that one was pretty flat, and as you could tell, it just kind of flew straight. Uh, it didn't really turn, it didn't really fade super hard at the end. It did have a, a consistent fade, we'll call it. It's not gonna, it's not gonna flip over on you like I saw, or like you saw right there. I threw that pretty hard and pretty flat into a headwind, and it, it didn't turn or anything. Uh, yeah, it's a good frisbee. You're gonna want one. All right, so my turn for the Lucid Raider. Now I'm gonna tell you straight out. This is not gonna be a disc that I'm gonna grab every time when I'm looking for distance, except when maybe there's a little bit of a headwind. I think this is gonna be a good headwind fighter for a uh, arm speed like myself. I'm gonna throw the heavier one just to kind of show you guys just how stable it's gonna be for someone that has uh, my arm speed. Now, I'm not saying that the Raider is definitely not a disc you can pick up. I just don't think this is gonna be a disc that I throw all the time for my distance shots, but let's see how it does throw for myself. I like the confidence in my crew. They brought it in. <laughs> they, like, they've moved up mm, a couple hundred feet. I feel, I feel like the batter at a at a softball game where they like, come on, bring it in, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in. Whatever, I'm gonna show them. Why. Yeah. So you can see that right out, just basically out of my hand, it started fading to the left just like I expected a Raider to do. Let's see what the lighter weight one does for me. All right, so even the lighter weight one, throwing it as flat as I can think it flat, I was thinking flat, it's still faded out to the left, and I think this is what's going to happen with the Lucid Raider. I, we have a little bit of a tailwind, so I'd almost think if I was in a headwind situation like it often is in Kansas, and I'm looking to fight the headwind, I definitely would grab the Lucid Raider. We finally have stock Lucid Raiders here. Um, people have been saying these are kind of understable, they're not really reliable in a headwind. I'm going to try and prove that wrong. We've got probably a five mile an hour headwind here, maybe a little bit more. I'm going to throw this as hard as I can and you're gonna see it's not gonna flip over to the right. It might flip to flat, but it's not gonna work right at all.
you can trust them. You can definitely trust those discs. Now, this uh, lighter weight Raider here, I'm actually going to throw it for a forehand. Robert threw the, the heavier one as a forehand, but my forehand is kind of about 330 feet or so, so it's kind of representative of that arm speed. So kind of in between Bobby's and, uh, and the rest of the people out here. That sounds mean. Anyway, uh, I'm going to throw a forehand here, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot stabler than I expected it to be. I really like the lighter discs on my forehand too because they don't cause as much uh, torque on my elbow, but it came out nice and clean. Um, they do have some dome, but it's kind of like they're flat before they get to the dome. So I was able to get a clean release on that. I definitely am thinking about bagging a lighter weight Raider for maximum distance forehands. So that's it for the Lucid Raider. Nice and overstable wind fighter. Bigger arms are going to love this for the consistency. Uh, slower arms are going to love this for the wind fighting. And yeah, just a nice overstable distance driver. So Lucid Raider, if you haven't picked one up, you need to check them out. Available now because it's Friday. Next, Goldline Explorer. One of my favorite fairway drivers, nice and neutral, a little bit overstable for slower arms. Just something that you can depend on. I love this one. You got to check it out. Next, I don't, I couldn't hear what you guys were saying down there, but this is one of like, this is the surprise of the day for me. The plus 170 carat diamond, uh, opto diamond. This is going to be a nice understable or control driver for, uh, for a lot of you guys and uh, maybe a nice roller at some point. And then last, we're not going to throw these, but we are going to show them Paige Pierce. Five time, oh, spoiler alert. Five time world champion Paige Pierce. We made some more uh, PP deputy stamps, but take a, take a real nice look at that. You see what's inside that stamp? It says five times. She's five time world champion. So, special five time edition. These are prime deputies. These are what Paige put, putted with to win the world title. You can pick yourself up some of these as well. Thank you guys so much for joining us for new release. Friday. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the Dynamic Disc channel, ring that bell for notifications so that when we have live videos like this, you can join us. We'll see you next time. All right, while you're watching the end screen, you should need to subscribe to us. Click up, up there to subscribe. Click over here to uh, watch some of the other videos. But before you go, let us know in the comments below. Do you like this style of new release Friday videos? We used to do live, but now we do post-produced and hopefully these are a lot better. Let us know if we need to add something to them, change something. Anything like that, let us know in the comments below. Thanks, guys.